Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 1 to 10 for the CompTIA Project Plus exam. Let's begin. Following a successful release, a project manager sent a survey to all stakeholders to gain an understanding of opportunity areas for the team. Which of the following can use the survey results as an input? The correct answer is C. Performance Feedback the survey results provide insights into how the stakeholders perceived the team's performance and outcomes. These insights are directly useful for performance feedback, helping the team identify strengths and areas for improvement. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Daily stand-up. Daily stand-ups focus on immediate tasks, progress, and blockers. Survey results are broader and retrospective not typically discussed in this short tactical meeting. B. Project momentum. While survey results may indirectly affect team morale, they are not a direct input into measuring or maintaining project momentum. D. Meeting minutes. Meeting minutes are records of what was discussed during a meeting. While they could include a summary of survey findings, they are not a use case or input consumer of the survey itself. Therefore, the correct answer is C, performance feedback. Which of the following is an activity that should be used in the closing phase of a project to support the project triple constraint? The correct answer is A, evaluating the project. Evaluating the project during the closing phase helps assess how well the project met its triple constraint, scope, time, and cost. This review helps identify what went well and what didn't, which directly relates to how the project balanced those three key elements. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Releasing the resources. This is a necessary administrative task during project closure, but it doesn't directly support or assess the triple constraint. C. Closing the contracts. This is also a formal closing activity, but it's more related to procurement and legal requirements rather than evaluating the project's performance against the triple constraint. D. Reconciling the budget. While relating to the cost aspect of the triple constraint, it doesn't provide a holistic view or evaluation of all three constraints. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Evaluating the project. During a quality analysis review, the causes of several issues have been highlighted. Which of the following should the project manager use to identify the most important causes? The correct answer is C. Pareto chart. A Pareto chart helps identify the most important causes by showing the frequency of problems in descending order. It's based on the 80-20 principle, which states that roughly 80% of problems come from 20% of causes. This makes it ideal for focusing on the most significant issues. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Ishikawa Diagram Also known as a fishbone diagram, it helps identify all possible causes of a problem, but it does not rank them by importance or frequency. B. Scatter Diagram This is used to identify correlations between two variables, not to determine which causes are the most important. D. Decision tree. This is used for evaluating possible decision paths and their outcomes, typically for risk or cost-benefit analysis, not root cause prioritization. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Pareto chart. Which of the following best describes how an organization should coordinate management of multiple related projects? The correct answer is B. Establish a program. When an organization has multiple related projects, the best way to coordinate and manage them is to establish a program. A program groups related projects together so they can be managed collectively to achieve benefits and control not available by managing them individually. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Apply the SDLC process. The software development lifecycle is a process for developing software not for managing multiple projects. C. Consult the CCB. The Change Control Board is responsible for approving or rejecting changes in a single project. It does not manage multiple related projects. D. Use different frameworks. Using different frameworks could lead to inconsistency and confusion. It doesn't provide a structured way to manage related projects together. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Establish a program. 
a project team gathers weekly to review its progress. Which of the following is the project manager most likely to have prepared to ensure team members who are absent remain informed about assignments? The correct answer is D. Meeting minutes. Meeting minutes are used to document what was discussed, decisions made, and assignments given during meetings. They are especially useful for keeping absent team members informed about what they have missed, including their potential responsibilities or updates. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Status report. This provides a high-level overview of project progress but doesn't typically include detailed discussions or individual assignments from meetings. B. Project plan. This outlines the project's scope, schedule, and resources but isn't updated weekly to reflect what happened in each meeting. C. Change log. This tracks changes to the project scope or plan not regular meeting discussions or task assignments. Therefore, the correct answer is D, meeting minutes. A project manager prefers to have immediate contact with team members because it allows for faster response times and more interactive discussions. Which of the following communication methods should the project manager use? The correct answer is A, synchronous. Synchronous communication occurs in real time allowing for immediate responses and interactive discussions, which is exactly what the project manager is aiming for. Examples include meetings, phone calls, or live chats. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Informal. This refers to the tone or style of communication, not the timing. Informal communication can be either synchronous or asynchronous. C. Asynchronous. This involves delayed responses, like emails or message boards. It's not ideal for immediate interaction or fast feedback. D. Formal. Like option B, this describes the tone or structure, such as documented reports or official memos, not the immediacy of the communication. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Synchronous. As part of the planning phase, a PM has defined tasks, durations, resources, and costs. Which of the following is the next step in this process? The correct answer is C. Seek baseline approval. Once the tasks, durations, resources, and costs have been defined during the planning phase, the next step is to seek baseline approval. This locks in the scope, schedule, and cost baselines so the project can move forward and be measured against them during execution. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Update the work breakdown structure. The WBS should already be developed before defining tasks, durations, and costs. It's not the next step after this point, it's earlier in the planning process. B. Review the backlog. This is typically part of Agile or Scrum methodologies, not a standard next step in traditional project planning. D. Establish the resource pool. This should be done before assigning resources to tasks. By the time you have defined resources and costs, the resource pool should already be established. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Seek baseline approval. A project manager realizes that a project will not be completed on time due to resource constraints. Which of the following actions should the project manager take next? The correct answer is C. Submit a change request to the change control board. When a project cannot meet its deadline due to resource constraints and the impact on the schedule is confirmed, the project manager should formally submit a change request to the CCB. This ensures the delay is documented, evaluated, and approved or rejected according to governance procedures. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Trigger the contingency plan and communicate with the stakeholders. Contingency plans are predefined responses to identified risks. If this delay was not anticipated, a contingency plan might not exist yet. B. Work with the functional managers to create a workaround. This might help, but it should happen before confirming the delay. Once the delay is certain, a formal change request is necessary. D. Transfer the risk by hiring a new vendor who was successful on a previous project. This is a risk response strategy, but it's not the immediate next step. Vendor changes involve contracts and must go through formal processes. E. Set up an escalation meeting with the sponsor. 
escalation is appropriate for unresolvable issues. But in this case, the next formal step is to submit a change request for schedule adjustment. Therefore, the correct answer is C. By developing a project schedule, a PM has already validated the constraints, outlined the duration of the tasks and the phases, and confirmed the proper sequence and flow of the project. Which of the following activities still needs to be performed to complete the schedule? The correct answer is A. Allocate resources. Even after outlining task durations, phases, and dependencies, the project schedule isn't truly complete until resources are allocated. Assigning specific people or assets to tasks helps finalize the schedule's feasibility and accuracy, as availability can impact timing. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Determine the project budget. This is part of cost management, not directly tied to finalizing the schedule. Though it's related, it's a separate process. C. Develop a communication plan. This is part of project communications planning and not directly linked to the scheduling process. D. Establish baselines. Baselines are set after the schedule is fully developed, including resource allocation. So it's a later step, not the one needed to complete the schedule development. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Allocate resources. A PM has identified all the resources involved in a project. The next step is to identify which resources are responsible for which tasks. Which of the following should be used to document this information? The correct answer is B. RACI A RACI matrix is used to clearly define and document who is responsible for which tasks in a project. It ensures clarity in roles and responsibilities among team members and stakeholders. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RFI. This is a procurement document used to gather information from vendors, not to assign internal project responsibilities. C. WBS. The WBS breaks the project down into tasks and deliverables, but it does not assign responsibilities. D. SOW. The SOW describes the project's scope, deliverables, and objectives, but it doesn't list who is responsible for specific tasks. Therefore, the correct answer is B, RACI. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.